Okay, so now let's take a look at things that atheists think we should stop saying. Should not say to atheists. First one, where do you get your morality from? Don't assume that because we're atheists, we don't have morals. We all have morals, we all have ethics. Ours don't derive from a holy book. Um, and I would hope that your Bible isn't the only reason you're not out there killing everybody in sight. So there's two possible things someone could mean when they say, where do you get your morals? They could mean, as it seems like was taken here, to mean that, uh, well, how do you know what's right and wrong? Where do you get your morals? So without Christianity, without the Bible to tell you what morality is, what's going to happen is you're just going to end up being uh, all kinds of horrible things. That's not typically what Christians mean when they when they bring this. But if, if they bring that sort of a criticism, if that is what they mean, then I uh, I kind of agree in a certain sense that, look, we the, we believe as Christians that there is a moral uh, awareness that is written onto our hearts, that unbelievers are aware of morality as well. Um, so, yes, we believe that you that you have morality, that you're aware of moral principles and that you can function morally that that's if someone is saying to you that that if you if you don't have a bible you won't know anything about what's right and wrong then yeah that's 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 ridiculous but what's typically being said here where do you get your morality is not to say that you don't act morally or all atheists are horrible people or christians are the only ones who who can do moral things that's not at all what almost any christian you're going to talk to is ever going to say or mean um, there, you know, there's people on the internet, just like there are people in every group on the internet that could say all kinds of things. But generally speaking, the meaningful um, uh, objection here or concern that actually does uh, need to be addressed is, no, no, we understand that you do have moral principles. We understand that you're aware of some of the same morality that, that we're aware of, just through general revelation, what we experience as we observe our own psychology and that of others. We're aware that you're aware of morality and that you have it. The question is, where does that track to? Where in reality does that track to? What is the foundation for that? What, from, from whence does that spring? Uh, because if you can't give me an account that it's some sort of um, uh, non-natural moral realism or some kind of platonic sort of idea, if you can't give me something like that, we're going to be really concerned about the ethics going on here and what you're doing um, in a meta sense because you're going to want to take those same, this it could be, by the way, why it comes up when you're in discussion with Christians is because um, they're going to take your words to to imply that you think that the moral concerns you have as an atheist for, say, the way Christians function or the way Christians vote or things that people do, it, we're, it's going to sound like you think that there is some overarching, uh, high-level, transcendental moral foundation that you can appeal to and then expect us to live accordingly. So they're actually getting at a, a much deeper, uh, not not so surfacey sort of a thing. They're, they're getting at the the deeper question of from whence does that morality spring? Not are you aware of morality? We believe you have morality. We want it, we want you to tell us where you think the foundation for that lies. That's of course the concern. Um, do you not believe in anything? Your life must be so empty. It's like, no, I, I don't believe in God. I believe in plenty of other things. And there's a lot of other things that give my life meaning, whether it's friends, uh, family, teaching, the, the kids I work with on a regular basis, uh, talking about atheism and writing about it, which means a lot to me. And I hope it means a lot to the people watching this or, or reading the website too. But all the atheists I know have plenty in their life that gives them meaning. Yeah, so once again, if someone is saying that you can't experience meaning in your life, then that's that's false. That's not a good way to go about this. Again, what they probably mean, that well, I guess the more sophisticated way of talking about this is to say, okay, you have, from what you've just said, you have some sort of an existential atheist, Sardian kind of uh, meaning that you, that you kind of determine for yourself. And that's popular right now. Neil deGrasse Tyson has said things like that, um, done videos on that, 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 hey, you make up your own meaning. And I like music and I like writing about atheism. So I'll just do that and that'll be my meaning. And I agree that you derive fulfillment. You derive some sense of uh, self-ascribed purpose from that. That. And I also agree that as an atheist, that uh, as a naturalistic atheist, that may be all you have access to. Um, but what we're asking for is, yeah, but what's the, what is the, the like uh, meta meaning? What is the ultimate meaning? Again, that's the sort of question that we're trying to get to. Why are you mad at God? Um, because apparently if I don't believe in God, I must have this deep 
hatred and I wake up every morning and I curse the sky. Atheists don't hate God. Atheists don't believe in God. We also don't hate unicorns. Now, he's obviously right that you can't just make those kind of presumptions about someone. You need to talk to each person and let them tell you that kind of information. Let them tell you what their feelings are about worldview, their uh, uh, the emotional uh, aspect of that, if if they have one that they're willing to talk about, you know, that sort of thing. But just approach each person as an individual. and find. So I, I agree that we shouldn't make these kind of assumptions. Now, um, why might some people who haven't thought that deeply about it develop this sort of a belief? Well, there's all kinds of videos on the internet of people tearing Bibles up, burning Bibles, and uh, people kicking Bibles around at a protest. That could be why some Christians develop the uh, belief that these people hate God. Now, it's not that I don't get the notion that what, what people like that might really be hating the concept of God or what the concept of Christianity, uh, the teaching of Christianity, has led to in their particular country and how people view them or how people view each other or how they vote, all those kind of things. Yeah, someone could hate all of that. And, and, I, and I agree that the, the people that are really thinking this through would certainly frame it up that way. But with all that we've just discussed, is is it unreasonable to think that some people, that some Christians might presume, okay, they, they're kicking the Bible, they're ripping the Bible up. It seems like they hate God. Is that an unreasonable conclusion? But in the end, yes, I do want to emphasize uh, that it is wrong to just make certain generalized assumptions about how individual atheists feel emotionally about things. Um, you can't prove God doesn't exist. That's always a fun one. Like, yeah, well, when you can prove to me that flying unicorns don't exist, we'll play the game. I always want to know why Christians have no problem disbelieving in, you know, Hindu gods, uh, other religions, gods, and they just dismiss it. They never think about it. It's not like they're sitting around thinking, maybe Zeus does exist. No, they're just like, of course Zeus doesn't exist. It's silly for anybody to think that or had thought about that in the past. And then when I do the same thing, like, yeah, well, I dismiss your God the same way. They're like, but you can't prove that. Look, you go through the other millions of gods and you disprove them, then I'll get around to yours. All right, we'll call that a deal. Well, first of all, this may rely on the idea that you can't prove a negative, which of course you can prove a negative if you can find something that is incoherent or contradictory within the nature of the thing that you're describing. If you wanted to show that God didn't exist, you would seek to show something about the nature of God so defined that is incoherent or contradictory. This is precisely what is done in incoherence arguments like the argument from evil or um, argument from omnipotence or these kind of things. Our omniscience uh, paradox, uh, omnipotence paradox. These are all attempts to show that there is something uh, contradictory in the nature of the being so defined by Christians and other theists such that it demonstrates this kind of being, at least, cannot exist. So in principle, you could do something like that. Um, and that is exactly what people try to do with the problem of evil, arguments from evil. And if you thought those were successful, I would expect you to point to them and maybe you do elsewhere, but here you're, you're just you're just telling me, well, we, it's just like uh, we don't believe in Hinduism. And this goes back to something else that's, that's going to be discussed or has been discussed in this video. And that is that uh, people throw out these religions as if they all have the same evidentiary appeal, and they simply don't. Make your case for Hinduism. Make your case for Islam. Make your case for Zeus. But we don't think of these other religions as exactly the same as Christianity. I understand you do, or in terms of the, the evidence or something like that, or at least that's how it sounds. But we actually don't think that. We think there is evidence that is uh, good enough that we think it's reasonable to conclude Christianity in the face of other religions. It's not like the existence of other religions itself and that I don't believe in them means I shouldn't believe in Christianity. I, I, I literally don't understand why people don't listen to at least what the Christian apologists say about this and go, okay, well, it sounds like that's not good. They need evidence. They want evidence or they want to hear the evidence for these other religions or, or what's wrong with Christianity. The fact that there are other religions is, okay, I would expect there would be other religions. Um, next one. What if you're wrong? What if I'm wrong? Nothing's going to happen if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, then basically what you're assuming is that God is going to punish me for asking honest questions and trying to, you know, search this stuff for myself and ending up at the conclusion that he didn't like. 
why would God be mad at me for actually doing some research instead of just sitting around and going to church a couple times a week and acting like I really care? I mean, hey, I wouldn't do it, but you can try to have that conversation with God uh, when you meet him. But in my opinion, uh, the, 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 this, the uh, idea was, what if you're wrong? So what if you're wrong? <laughs> you're saying, uh, if I'm wrong, nothing's going to happen. Yeah, but what if you're wrong, right? What if you're wrong about the way you're thinking about how God should think about this? Right. What if you're wrong was the question. Now, there are actually a number more things that he thinks Christians should stop saying to atheists. And I think I'll cover those in a future video. So the link is in the description. and You can go check that out for yourself. And I'll see you next time on Trinity Radio.